Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar episode number 15 where we are joined by Laura Elizabeth and she's going to be talking to us about all the kinds of awesome things she's got going on. I don't know how she gets it all done, but we're going to try to find that out today. So hello everyone. I'm Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design. As always with me is Matt Siebert. How's it going this morning, Matt? It is going well. It's, uh, it's going to be an interesting day, so I'm looking forward to it. It's always interesting. I've always pretty much just told people my Tuesdays are completely... Uh, just no work gets done now. It's like we have to prep for the show, then we have to do the show, then we have to do a bunch of work after the show. So it's almost like I get nothing done on Tuesday now. Except for making an awesome show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the best part, but like clients need me for stuff. So I ignore them on Tuesdays now. Well, hello, Laura, you said this is your first Facebook Live. So welcome to the admin bar and welcome to Facebook Live. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. I'm excited. Yeah, we're glad to have you. So for people who uh, are not familiar with you, why don't you give us a short introduction about yourself and tell us what you got going on? Yeah, so I'm Laura and I, um, well, for the last seven years or so, I was a freelancer, freelance web designer. Um, and then a couple of years ago in October 2016, I launched my first product, which was which is Client Portal, um, which is like a really lightweight project management um, tool for freelancers and agencies. Um, then about a year ago, uh, almost to the day, I think I became full-time on product. So I didn't do any more freelance work. Um, and I launched an online course called design Academy, where I teach design, uh, teach developers how to design. Um, and then I think around November last year, I launched another product, which is called project pack, which is every single template, um, that freelancers need uh, specifically freelance web designers at the minute but it's going to be expanded into consultants and st stuff like that okay. um, to work on their projects so yeah it's been a busy few years so how awesome is it to be done with like doing client work i, I think about that like one day i, I probably want to not be um, getting yelled at about stupid things so how awesome is that it's like, it's the most awesome thing. I absolutely love it. Um, I, I, I was kind of the same. I wanted to, I always wanted to get into products or just something just where I wasn't, I, I didn't feel like I was um, selling time for money. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like I got into products by a bit of an accident because I didn't realize I was, I, Client Portal was something I made for myself to use with my clients to make the whole process easier, the onboarding easier. Um, and I was speaking at a load of conferences, helping teaching other freelancers how they can improve their onboarding process. And I'd sort of mentioned that, you know, you can have this portal on your website um, and it's going to really help your clients know where everything is, where the project's at. Um, and people after the conference would say, uh, that sounds amazing. Where can I buy this? Do you, do you do you sell your portal? And I was like, no, but I guess I could. I've always wanted to do products and I've always thought I didn't have anything to sell, but I guess I do. Um, started selling it and it just, uh, people really liked it, which I was really happy about. Yeah. And that's how I first got introduced to you was, uh, you did that, uh, you did, sorry, you did client portal on AppSumo. Um, and that's how I found it for the first time. So, um, that, that's interesting that you kind of answered my first question for you is kind of how did that need come about? Um, so when you started selling it, and you know, you you said you had people coming up to you and asking you for it. What kind of problems did you think originally that that was going to solve for people? Like, how did you explain, or how would you explain it now to people? Um, how Client Portal works? Yeah. So the reason I really made it is because when I was freelancing, I didn't really feel like I had a very professional process with my clients, and because it was just me, and I was working with, I was working with kind of small to medium sized businesses, so I wasn't working with huge clients. Um, and I tried things like Basecamp, like project management software, and I found that it was really good, but it was too complex for what I needed. And my clients weren't using it. They would just email me instead of doing anything in Basecamp. And I'd end up, it kind of gave me extra work because I'd have to just keep putting things back into Basecamp and, you know, it was expensive and stuff like that. So I just thought, okay, this isn't working for me. And I realized that all I really wanted was just something on my website where my clients could go to log in and access all of their deliverables. So, you know, if I was doing a logo for them, they could access the logo files, they could access the contract or the proposal, um, and all these little random links that I'd be sending them, maybe a Google Drive folder um, or something like that, or maybe a form that I wanted them to submit things to. Um, 
and that's really all I wanted. So um, I basically created something that is in between project management software and not project management software. So a really simple, lightweight tool that freelancers can use um, that doesn't involve any extra work on the client. Mm -hmm. um, so the, it does. If the client, um, the client can still communicate you without having communicate with you without having to log in, um, but they can log in at any time and find things that they need if they need it. So it stops them emailing you saying, you know, I, I actually literally had um, the other day someone messaged me on Skype who was a client from it must have been about five or six years ago saying I've lost my logo file again <laughs> and this <laughs> happens like all the time <laughs> I'm like, I don't know where that is because that I didn't have client portal at that point uh, I don't know where that logo is anymore it's on a hard drive somewhere and I'm gonna have to find which hard drive it's on and send it to him um, but it kind of solves problems like that because if they have this, it's a deliverable that they can keep um, because the portals are so lightweight. It doesn't really take up any space on your website. You can even host it on their website if you want. And it's just got everything they need. So if your client is really bad at organizing and keeping files on their computer, you've kind of got them covered. So that's awesome. Like yeah. And I mean, it, uh, like you said previously, more complex software, you know, like a lot of clients don't want that. And not only is it, kind of overwhelming for them, but it is more work on your end because of all the education that you need to put them through so that they can just use it. So uh, yeah. a more simplistic like approach is definitely, it's, it's definitely needed. Yeah, exactly. I wanted there to be pretty much zero learning curve. If you know how to log into something, then, then you you've got it. it. Right. And, and I do like the way it's, it's basically for anybody who hadn't used it, there's, it's, integrated right into WordPress. So it works kind of like how a custom post type would work. I'm guessing that's how it's actually set up is like through custom post types. Um, so you can you can create uh, basically little boxes and put all kinds of different content on there, uh, link to external things, uh, actually link to pages within there, um, all kinds of cool stuff. So I, when I found it, I actually found it through AppSumo. So how did uh, how did that decision go? I, I've always been curious, like people that put their product on AppSumo, obviously you're going to have to discount it pretty heavily, but you're going to get a huge influx of customers. So just out of, to, for my own curiosity, what was that kind of decision like and, and how do you think that worked out for you? Yeah, I actually get this question a lot and it was, it was one of those things. So they approached me and asked if I'd want to put client, and I thought about maybe approaching them at one point, but it was one of those things where I was just, oh, I'm really not sure. And then when they approached me, I felt like I can't say no. I've got to at least see how this plays out. Because um, if I say no, I'll never know. If I say yes, it could be terrible, but at least I've tried it. Um, it was really hard. So putting it on AppSumo for the, the price that I did was really difficult uh, for me, uh, mainly because I'd get customers who had previously bought it um, emailing me, being like, hey, why didn't you tell me you were going to put it on AppSumo? Um, mm -hmm. I feel like I've been ripped off or something. And I, I didn't know I was going to put it on AppSumo. It just, right. you know, the opportunity arose and it happened. And I just felt really bad. Like I felt like it was something sleazy that I did, but that didn't last long and it kind of died down after a while and people were, you know, mostly okay with it. Um, the actual promotion when it went so much better than I thought it, it would. And um, when I was speaking to them afterwards, they said it was one of the bigger deals that they did, it ended up, um, we crossed like, I can't remember, it was like we crossed like the 5,000 mark or something, which That's is awesome. um, yeah. pretty insane. And yeah. because my worry was going into it was that I was like, you know, all this software that's on AppSumo, it's really complex and really big. I mean, I see like analytic software and right. all this stuff. And I was like, are people really gonna want Client Portal? Because it is a simple tool. And I felt like AppSumo customers wanted really intense, more base camp style project management stuff. But I think something about the simplicity, and I think a lot of it came down to the look of client portal as well. People, it's really easy to brand and people felt like it could be something that felt like it was theirs um, and it made them look really good. And I, I think something about that just really spoke to people. So um, it went really well. The only thing I struggled with is I didn't anticipate the amount of support um, extra support there would be um, and it's also ongoing support as well so I need to I've now got to think really carefully every time I do an update because I've got so many more thousand extra customers every time I do an update I've got to make sure that I have something in place to deal with the support requests that are bound to come in because of plugin conflicts and stuff that we just can't anticipate so that's been a bit of a learning curve as well and I, I need to make sure I can still 
fund the product um, with all the extra support. So that's that's been a challenge, but it's been it's been fine. I've been managing to do it so far. So do you have like a team that works with you on all that support request and all that? Um, kind of. So I have one developer. Um, she only actually works for me part time, uh, but she's really good and she's ridiculously um, fast about solving issues. Um, I have a, a VA. Again, she just works with me part time. So it's pretty much just us three. Wow. Um, and it manages to work pretty well as long as when we have an when we have an update coming, my developer is pretty much in charge of the updates for client portal because she'll schedule them when she's got time. Um, to field the support requests. Um, and my VA kind of helps out with the stuff, you know, I guess tier one support. Um, I help out with tier two and my developers like the the top one, um, you know, who does all the, the crazy stuff that I have no idea how I would possibly fix. And, you know, I'm surprised it's, I haven't felt like I've needed to expand the team at all. It's been working pretty well. We get back to most people within a day or two. Um, so yeah, it surprisingly seems to be kind of ticking along pretty well. That's awesome. Yeah. Especially to be able to have such a big product and keep your business so lean, you know, cause more people, more problems, all that kind of thing. So that's, that's, that's a huge accomplishment. I think I did, we did get a couple questions here. Uh, Chris Castillo asked, um, would you, would you, if you had to do it all over again, would you go the AppSumo route with client portal? Uh, if you had to do it again? I think I would. Um, if you asked me that just after the promotion, I might have said no. Um, but I think, I really do think long term, it's been a good thing because the thing about um, AppSumo customers is they, um, they're, they're pretty passionate about the products that they buy, which I was surprised about. I kind of thought AppSumo customers would just buy a ton of stuff and not really care about the roadmap or anything that's happening. Because it's so much um, less expensive and they're getting it as a deal and right. Yeah, I thought it would just be, they'd kind of maybe discard it and they wouldn't really care very much. But ever since I've had it, if I ever want feedback on Client Portal, um, I know the AppSumo people will come through and they've ended up wow. being some of my most loyal customers. Um, and yeah, it's the, the main part, the main difficult part, like I said, is the ongoing support. And I wish I thought about that more before I, um, before I did it, because I know there's a lot of issues with, um, AppSumo customers and they, <clears throat> they get frustrated when, um, certain things become paid for. Mm. Um, but because I can see it from both sides, I've bought things on AppSumo before, and I'm also an AppSumo creator. I kind of understand why businesses need to do this because, you know, if you can't support your product, your your product ends up failing. Mm -hmm. So you have right. to be always thinking of ways to monetize it. Um, and that's part of the reason I launched Project Pack was because I, I Project Pack is, is really to help with client portal support um, because it integrates with client portal. It's, it's kind of a low price. Um, I think it's actually probably too low because it's so unbelievably comprehensive. Um, but it just really helps with that, um, with keeping client portal updated and bringing out new features and all that kind of thing. Yeah, and no, I definitely want to get into Project Pack because that was something I found during uh, Black Friday last year and bought and I've been super impressed with. But I do want to say, uh, Mark James commented in here that he said he's found support to be top notch for client portal. So I wanted to make sure to get that <laughs> message. And he, he also asked if you had any updates on any upcoming things coming to client portal or any changes or anything like that on the roadmap. So is there anything you can share with us on that today? Yeah. So we try to do a sort of a big feature every four to six weeks, and then we do sort of little ones, you know, bug fixes and small tweaks throughout. Um, the next one that we're working on right now is the private file uploads, uh, which has actually been really tricky trying to figure out a way because currently we use WordPress's media library. Mm -hmm. And obviously if you've got the link to that, um, anyone can access that file. So the private file uploads has been the thing that we've just, we need, it's not really a, a sexy feature, <laughs> but it's just the thing that's been so sorely needed. Um, so that one's coming up. Um, we just released um, being able to have multiple clients per portal. Um, unfortunately, so I had this issue <laughs> recently where I had this public roadmap on Trello and uh, someone went through and archived literally every single card and just completely messed up the entire board. Oh, um, so <laughs> all my change log and everything was there. Every feature request was there. Every um, all our upcoming things that we're working on was there. So 
off the top of my head, I'm kind of struggling to remember because I need to figure that mess out. That's just been uh, right. crazy. Um, but right now the feature is going to be private uploads. Um, and I can't remember what's coming next, but we are always having something in the pipeline. And they're going to take a lead pipe to the person who jacked up the Trello board too. That's also yeah. on the future roadmap. That's terrible. I can't, uh, I can't imagine why. <laughs> well, I messaged him cause I found out, I, I, I knew who it was. It was, really? a, it was a customer and I messaged him and I was like, uh, what happened? And I kind of forgave him because he said he didn't realize that what the changes he was making were public to everyone. He thought that that when he had this Trello board, that if things that he were doing, he was only seeing and he didn't realize he messed up for everyone. Oh, and so I was like, OK, that's I guess that's fair enough. But at the same time, why would you why would you do that even for your own right. <laughs> stuff? It, I mean, it must have taken forever. I mean, that board was. <laughs> That board was intense. I mean, he had, he took some time to that. I'm so. sure you thought somebody was really out for you on that one then. Yeah, I really did. And, you know, people are commenting and people are pretty sympathetic about it. Um, but it's just one of those things that I've just, I, I really need to sort, but it's going to be a bit of a mammoth job to figure that out. No yeah. doubt. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, Project Pack a little bit. So I know here in our group, we get questions about things that Project Pack actually solves all the time. So talking about onboarding processes, uh, you know, the way you move a client through the the entire build, contracts, I mean, the list goes on and on. So when I first saw Project Pack, and it was, like I said, it was back during like the Black Friday time of 2018, uh, it was like a pre-sale deal. So the actual product wasn't even out yet, but there was kind of a map of all the things that were gonna be in here at, like you said, a ridiculously low price. Um, and so it got delivered shortly after um, Black Friday was over. And I was, I'll be honest, I was a little bit skeptical of how good this was going to be because of the price point. So I think you can do that uh, when you price something very low. It it gave me the feeling that maybe this wouldn't be that great, but the price was so low. I'm like, hey, I can't lose, you know, <laughs> even if I just get one or two things from this, you know, uh, it'll be a win for me. But I was completely blown away when I got it because there's literally everything you could open up a web design agency, download that pack and have everything you need to start going. So yeah. I know you said that part of that was kind of solve some problems or so, to piggyback on client portal. But uh, so tell me how that idea was born. Yeah, so it was basically the, I mean, the things that people were emailing in about, about client portal is that they wanted help with, they really wanted help with how to structure a project and they wanted everything in place so they wanted a portal that was there that was kind of finished that they just had to tweak um and so project pack was was kind of born out of that it was i, I wanted to give them pretty much what you said if you wanted to open an agency tomorrow and you were doing web because at the minute the only project pack we've got is web design if you were doing a web design project you would have everything you need in this pack um, and everything is completely uh, branded to you. It uses, um, I was, I spent a lot of time on the design because it uses just three colors, which means all you have to do is change three colors, um, and your logo. And depending on which software you use, that could literally just be, if you're using sketch or InDesign or something that could just be one change, um, and it will update everywhere. Um, and I wanted all the copy, all the content to be actual real content that I'd used. And I partnered with Brennan Dunn from W Freelancing and he'd used that was, you know, conversion focused for the proposal, um, actual contracts that we use, actual onboarding stuff that we use. Um, because one of my frustrations when I've bought templates in the past is that it was filled with either lorem ipsum or it was filled with content that you just wouldn't ever use. It just yeah. didn't sound, it just sounded really rubbish. It doesn't mm -hmm. sound like it's from a human being. Like I talk to my customers, like I'm talking to everybody on here, you know, like I think that's why people, my customers like doing business with me because I'm just a person. I'm not some crazy corporation. And man, some yeah. of those things you get are just, I would never say these things. So I don't understand why I would try to put this in my, you know, my business workflow. Yeah, exactly. So I wanted it to be really kind of conversational stuff that, you know, I would use in my business and so on. Um, I got custom illustrations made for it. Um, and we actually give away the the vector versions of it. And people have emailed in being like, can I use these illustrations in my projects? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So even for the illustrations, I mean, the illustrations are beautiful Yeah. Um, alone. Um, it's just, I just wanted it to be, even though it was something to help um, client portal, I wanted it to be something that was really good in its own right. And I knew that playing to my strengths is sort of polish and design and being able to make something look 
pretty slick. So I wanted to play to my strengths and um, have it super detailed and you know all that kind of thing. So yeah, it's definitely worth definitely worth the price. I think. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think the first thing that I immediately like stole from that and and was working into my <clears throat> own thing. Uh, you had like a a workflow of all the processes and what i thought was just so simple and genius on it was it was color coded for what the responsibilities were for the designer and what the responsibilities were for the client and it's just like man that is so easy for them to look at and go okay now the ball is in my court when we get to this and it was just something like i mean it was it was just so simple but so yeah. effective so i was like man this thing is, is definitely worth every penny so yeah, um, yeah. And clients love that because um, they, when they start a project, and I found at being a client as well, uh, when you start a project, you're really excited about how it's going to go, and it's kind of fun looking at the process and seeing what's going to happen. And it, you know, when when you're starting a project, the reason I always focus on onboarding is because when you're starting a project um, with a new client, you're usually knee deep in current client work, so you don't always have a lot of time to spend on these new clients but I think that relationship at the start is really important to get right um, so if you can have something that is super easy to just send over that's going to get them excited getting them thinking I made a really good choice by hiring this person keep them busy you know give them give them like homework or st stuff that they need to do stuff that they can read through stuff that they can look at so even if you can't start right away which a lot of freelancers and agencies can't start immediately um, Stuff like that just is just a huge help when you're trying to meet deadlines and onboard new clients at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it, it helps to set expectations too, of like, you know, both what, what's expected of you as the designer and them as the, uh, as the client, which is hugely important to, uh, to a smooth project. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we are getting more questions coming in about Project Pack. Um, we've got uh, Mark James asked, has anybody used it yet? I am not very good with design software. What's the easiest way or best approach to, uh, to making those edits? Um, so it comes in a lot of different formats. If you're not used to design software, we have Google Docs version of almost every template. Um, the only templates that we don't have Google Docs versions of are the, so we have things like um, the wireframe presentation, the website presentation, and uh, the style guide, I think, um, because they're more, I, I couldn't figure out how to make that work in Google Docs. Right. Um, so, but for the vast majority of them, you can just open up a Google Doc and just type in it. And it, I'm surprised actually, I was a bit worried about, will I be able to format this to look like the other documents, but it actually turned out um, pretty well, so. Yeah. That's awesome. yeah. And I think that was like a genius move on your part, offering it in so many different formats, which I'm sure was a huge pain in the ass uh, <laughs> to redo your design like five different times. But, you know, like for me, when I open it, I'm going to open it up to to change everything out in Adobe software, you know, yeah. uh, but Mark probably doesn't use Adobe software. So, you know, you would have eliminated so many people had you not made it uh, accessible for PC and Mac and for people that don't have any design software. So yeah. I think that's that's and it's, really it's a testament to uh, to be able to create something in Illustrator and then recreate it in Google Docs. Like that's uh, that's not yeah. easy. You should get it's like a not... little badge for that or something. <laughs> yeah. I know it's it's crazy, and I'm actually still working on these. So if you use Adobe, you'll be happy that I'm almost finished with the InDesign versions, okay. um, which is going to be super handy for people who use Adobe stuff. Because I think InDesign is InDesign and Google Docs are the two easiest. If you know InDesign, it's the easiest one to edit. Um, Sketch is really good. Uh, but sketch with long bits of text can be a little bit clunky. So if you're changing a lot of text, it can be a bit difficult. Um, but yeah, the, the most difficult part has definitely been there are different software has different limitations. And I wanted every single pack to be ridiculously easy to rebrand. Um, and yeah, I definitely ran into some issues and it took a lot longer than I thought. Like everything I do, I'm like, oh, I can do this in a week. And it's <laughs> like two months later and I'm still working on it. But it's going well uh, you did an awesome job because they are all those templates, all the sheets and everything are are super beautiful. So you did an amazing job, and they're they're not overly designed either. So I think that's a problem. Like, you know, uh, me and Matt both come from like a design background, so we came to web after design. Uh, and but a lot of people we deal with um, have been developers for a long time and are trying to learn design. And that's one thing that I think 
a lot of design people notice about developers is they think they have to like press all the buttons and do all the design things to make a design look good but that's not ex that's like the opposite of what you want to do it needs to be really clean and simple and that's what makes makes design so effective and i think that's one thing that's good in all these packs is they're not overly designed they're simplistic but they're they're really pretty just just on their own as wow. like artwork so yeah, kudos awesome good to hear yeah did you have any more questions there matt before i keep rattling on uh yeah so we've got a couple others um and i think that they're they're voiced by one person but um Looks like everybody's kind of wondering also, saying that as, as good as it is, um, and it's, it's great as it currently is, um, are there going to be any updates to templates or anything new coming along the, the line? Um, possibly. I, I ask, so um, in the emails I send to Project Pack customers, I ask if there's anything else people would want. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't had an awful lot of responses to people asking for new things, but if people ask for stuff, then yeah, I would, I mean... I'll always, I can always add new things to it because that's really easy to do and it just makes it more valuable. So I'm more than happy to add things or change things. Yeah, I, I haven't had much requests. I should have opened this before uh, we did this. So forgive me on the fly, but do you know how many like documents are like if we open the PDF copy of all of it, how many documents are in there? Do you know? I should know this. Yeah. I think maybe, uh, I want to say like maybe late 20, early, late, like, 28 maybe something like that here we go here we go i, I do have it here uh um, that's if i said that right yeah well we're, we're gonna put <laughs> 20 you, something yeah we're gonna see if we can make it happen now okay well that might not be the best way to go oh uh, yeah because yeah, I, I got it all in a bunch of different files i would have to do it uh, uh well i can I i'll, I'll do a quick counting. count i got mm -hmm. it all I've just been working. There's a on lot. The, the, There's um, a lot of documents in there. So if, if anybody thinks you're missing something, I'll, I'll be interested in hearing what that is for sure. Oh, Mike Sales so got, got a question about something else too. There's 20, by the way. 20. 20. Okay. There you go. Uh, so yeah, Mike Sale asks, uh, when is the consulting pack coming? And Toddy Jones backs that up, saying that's my question too. Yeah, that's my next one that I'm going to work on. I'm really excited about that because it's been the most requested uh, thing since I've launched it. Um, in terms of when it's coming, I, I'm not entirely sure. I wanted it, I've been aiming in my head for late February, early March. Um, but because I'm still working on the InDesign versions of the web design edition, I'm not entirely sure how realistic that is. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think because I've already done the web design edition and I've got the design pretty much sorted in there, the consultant edition won't take as long. Um, but I just don't have a timeline right now until I finish this InDesign thing. Um, but I'm going to aim for um, sometime in March. I don't really want it to be later than March because people have been asking for a while. So, mm -hmm. Awesome. Let's see here. Yep. I actually, I'm glad they asked that because I had that on my list as well. So yeah, that's awesome. So we'll, we'll uh, keep the train moving here and talk about one more uh, thing you have going on, and that is your Design Academy. So I know I've seen several people, I want to say uh, Dave Foy has recommended it uh, to some folks, um, and I think that's something that we can definitely use more of is good design. So um, obviously you can design. So how did, this, uh, how did Design Academy come about? Yeah, so this was the thing. This is actually the thing I've been kind of working on the longest. Um, so when I was a freelancer, I wanted to... Uh, write about design um, and I wanted to write to a specific type of person and most of my clients were developers or my favorite clients were developers so I ended up targeting just developers who I wanted to work with um, when I was designing so I'd basically write articles for developers teaching them how to design um, as kind of lead generation in a way. So, you know, I wanted to give them the tools that they needed in order to make their side projects look really good in the hope that when they needed something big, maybe the company they were working at or something that they would think of me and then hire me. Um, that actually ended up going really well. People were really responding well to the things I was writing. And I thought, actually, instead of using this as lead generation, I'd, I'd like to just go all in on it. Um, so I decided to create a course um, it was a crazy amount of work because um, teaching design, I, I like pretty much everything I do, and I think most people are the same. I want it to be better than everything else out there. Um, so I've read a ton of design books. I struggled so much to learn design. I 
went to design school and everything and I just and I worked in an agency and I didn't learn how to design and I felt like everything out there was just kind of they were talking about balance and harmony and all these kind of fancy words that I, I felt like I should just know how to do it and I didn't um, and I didn't know why so it took me many years to actually learn to make something look good and when I did I realized you know it's actually not that hard to make something look good um, and I was trying to think about why I found it so hard to learn and um, I was thinking a lot about how could I teach what I know to people who were in my shoes maybe a few years back. Um, so I tried to make a very systematic approach to um, teaching design. I tried to make it very step by step. Um, I use the term debugging design a lot because I realized that's pretty much how um, I work and most other designers work is that we don't just start from nothing and then create something beautiful. We start with by creating something that looks really, really bad. And then we just figure out why it looks bad and keep changing it. Um, just like if you're, you know, debugging software or something. Yeah, me and um, Matt have talked several times about how, you know, design is such a puzzle, you know, so I'll do that all the time. I'll be designing something in Illustrator and it's basically just throw up all over the screen until you have everything on there. And then let's figure out how all these pieces kind of fit together. So that's that's an awesome approach. I like that. Yeah, it's and it's good. And it kind of takes the pressure out of it because what I find is that developers they they try something and then it doesn't necessarily look good and then they think i just can't do it i just i'm i can't design which is what i thought too um but it's really not the case as long as you can learn how to see what's wrong with your design um which you know through the course we show you how to do that um and just keep debugging it just step by step going through the most common issues with a design and um you know you will get there and then the more you do it the less mistakes you'll make um, you know, from when you're at square one. So now when I design something, I actually, I almost do design something that looks really good, good scratch. Um, but that's only because I've spent the last um, seven or eight years or so designing things that look awful and I've had to spend a ton of time redoing it. And I've just learned from all my mistakes that I've been making, you know, put more spacing in that you think, than you think you need and it's going to look better. It. Yeah, yeah exactly. Spacing. Just little things like that. So now I don't make the mistake by putting in less spacing. Um, so yeah, it just kind of works like that. So yeah, the course was just, um, uh, it was, I think the course has been the biggest project that I've ever worked on. Um, the most difficult, um, also the most rewarding because it's nice to see people, you know, learning and actually being able to do things they never thought they could do. So um, yeah, that's been a ton of fun. And I've talked with uh, with Pisha before, like I, I've been designing professionally since like 2002, uh, which seems to be getting further and further away. And I'm feeling older and older <laughs> as that time goes on. Uh, but I had no formal training in it. So I think one thing that like we'll, we'll get questions in the group here where we have a lot of developers and they'll ask me questions about, you know, design advice. And I'm like, I, I have no way to articulate design advice because I was never taught any of these things like in a formal way. So like all those words you're talking about, you know, like balance and all these things, like I get the concepts because I've just done them and it's like muscle memory at this point, but like being able to explain those things is difficult for me. And Mark James put in here, uh, who would this course be good for and who not for? And before you answer it, I want to say, I bet this is good for anybody who's designing things. Because for me, I, I could see myself taking a course like this because I think it would um, make me more efficient at being able to like understand why things I'm doing look good and why things I'm doing don't look good or to be able to like regurgitate that information or when a client says, you know, why did you do something like this? You know, I struggled sometimes to say like, because this is the way it looks good. And that's the only way I can like get that out of my brain uh, when I really need to be able to say, because it solves X and Y problems, you know? So um, what would your answer be to that, Laura? Yeah, kind of a similar thing. So I actually have a surprising amount of designers who take the course. Um, I have a lot of VAs as well, um, and they take it because they, they're they asked by their clients to do little design tweaks. Maybe they have to put up a landing page or something, and they want to be able to make it look good. Um, it's marketed to developers specifically because that's just who I was talking to originally. But it can be really good for anyone who wants to basically, who does design day to day, maybe um, people who have a side project. Maybe if you want to, you're freelancing and you want to get into products and you want to learn how to make your product look good, or you want to learn how to make your marketing website look good. Um, you know, if you are a freelancer and you want to be able to make the things you're doing look good. So if you're a developer, you want to make the designs that you're doing look good and mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. It's 
the the course specifically this the first course that i have is called design fundamentals and that teaches the fundamentals of design um but we go through it in terms of a marketing website so if you're if you do a lot of things with marketing websites, um, the course will be really good for you. You'll still learn things if you're doing apps and stuff, um, but I'm actually creating an add-on course for you know more UX-focused design, more um, software-focused design. Uh, the first one was just more about marketing websites because I found it was a lot easier to teach the principles with using something like that without needing all the extra stuff that you need to think about when you're doing software. Um, so yes, that's who it's pretty good for, much good for. So people can uh, check that out and we'll put links in all the show notes and everything so people can get to everything. But if you go to designacademy.io, you can get to all that. Now I see in here, there's an enroll now button, but it doesn't look like I can quite enroll right now. So I'm guessing you, uh, you have this open at a certain period of time, but it does look like you offer uh, a free lesson people can sign up for today. Is that right? Yeah, so there's a free, uh, I think it's six day email course that kind of teaches you, it goes through, I think one, so in the course, it has about six modules and it goes through one principle in those modules a day for six days. And then, yeah, like I say, I open it up. Um, I'm next opening it. I think it's going to be uh, around March time again, like project pack. Um, because what I'm actually doing at the minute is I'm going through, we go through the course with a set group of people who all join at the same time and you can decide whether you want to go through the course on your own um, or you can decide if you want to go through the course with everyone else and if you decide to go through the course with everyone else we do a weekly call where we go through one module a week and you submit your assignments so we have assignments after each week and i'll just go through and critique them um, usually on a friday uh, every week so for six weeks so the next one's going to be opening in April and that's really good because you get actual feedback on your work and it's if you're not very good at keeping yourself accountable to courses it's a good way to keep accountable you'll be in a slack group with other students and um, yeah so it's pretty good that sounds awesome last week we had a uh, we had a conversation about like work-life balance and I, I want to piggyback on that for one second to ask you how the hell you're doing all these things at one time and still, uh, you know, eating, sleeping, all those things. You sound like you're a pretty busy person. Yeah, I'm pretty busy, but I take a surprising amount of time off. Um, so I uh, like this morning, I think I went on like a two hour walk or something. And um, I have a piano in the background that I play a lot and I, I travel a lot as well, which is pretty cool. Um, I think... So for me, keeping really busy in my personal life makes me so much more productive in my professional life. Because when I when I sit here, and I've, I've done this so many times where I, I'll work eight to 10 hours a day, every day. Um, and I'm just kind of sat there because I feel like I have to. And I end up doing all these kind of little tasks that don't really push things forward. Um, and I find that when I have just small blocks of time to do something, um, for example, before this call today, I had maybe an hour and I was like, okay, I'm going to get um, two InDesign templates for project pack finished. Um, and, you know, cause I was against the clock. I worked really hard and got it done. Mm -hmm. um, and I find for me, and I think this is just a personal thing for me, having very small amounts of time to get things done, I get a crazy amount done. And I'm always prioritizing the most important things. And that's worked so well for me um, these last, this last year or so. And yeah, that's, that's super interesting. Kind of makes me think of like the, uh, the 80, 20 rule, you know, 20% uh, of the things you do account for 80% of the results. So that's probably why we're wasting so much time on these little tiny tasks that really don't do anything. <laughs> yep. uh, and again, they're accounting for, for little bits of stuff. Well, I'd, I definitely appreciate you coming on here. Um, Matt, do you have any additional questions for Laura I didn't get to or things you want to ask her? No, I don't think so. I think this show, uh, this went really well. We got a lot of uh, people coming in and uh, asking questions, which was incredibly helpful. So thank you, everybody that uh, participated today. Yeah, it's good when we have a good guest on that can prop us up. Although I will say, I'm going to toot our own horn right here and let everybody okay. know that uh today we were uh we were selected as one of the 10 awesome face facebook groups for design agency design agencies by uh angled crown so look at there we're uh, wow. we're we're making an impact Congrats, so, that's, that's amazing. awesome <laughs> So anyways, well, I definitely appreciate you joining us here, Laura. I do uh, I do have a little bit of other housekeeping before I, I want to give you another second to, to tell everybody where to find you. But uh, on Friday, we have a 
a live webinar going on with Pete Everett called Serious SEO Shit, um, where he's actually going to take one of the pages I made for a client that's live, and you're going to see the page, and he's going to audit the whole thing and tell me everything that's wrong with it from an SEO standpoint. So um, it could be an very embarrassing day for me. So we'll find out if I've done a good job or bad job. But I think you'll learn a lot about kind of the, the process he goes through as an SEO expert to go through and audit pages for clients. So I think there'll be lots to learn from that. So you can register to be a part of that by going to theadminbar.com forward slash SEO and you can uh, get signed up. I think we got probably close to 100 people or so registered at this point. It'll be live um, and uh, Pete will be there to ask questions as well. So we'll probably keep it up in the group afterwards for a few days, but it won't live forever. So make sure you register and get on to that. So before we sign off, Laura, where can uh, where can people find out more about you, con uh, get in contact with you, follow you around on the interwebs? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so the best place to find me is on Twitter. So my Twitter handle is at Laurium, which is L-A-U-R-I-U-M. Um, you can also find Client Portal at client-portal.io, Design Academy, designacademy.io, and then just to mix it up a bit, projectpack.co. So um, yeah, that's pretty much me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We certainly appreciate it. And I definitely, uh, I hope people go and check out all these awesome things you got going on because I think they are uh, super valuable. And I look forward to joining the, uh, the Design Academy and seeing what I can learn from that later on this year. So awesome. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate it and we will see you guys on the next one. Bye.